All right, let's finish up 3-1 with just more graphing, right? It just takes lots of practice to get good at the graphing. So we might feel a little overwhelmed from last time. But let's just do more. Practice is how we'll get better at this. So I'm just going to sketch a graph on the side. Um, we have x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 12x squared. So I'm just going to go through this checklist again. So n behavior. That's the leading term. So in this case, it would be x to the fourth. Um, it's not necessarily the first term, it's the highest power. We just usually have that one show up first. So x to the fourth is my leading term, meaning it's positive coefficient, even power. Um, if you look back, that's like an x squared function, so it goes up and up. So just a little sketch in the corner of my graph. I don't know what's happening in the middle, but I know it'll go up and up on the left and the right side. Is there any symmetry? Um, no, because I have a mix of odd and even powers. All right, and then finally, let's do those intercepts. So do the y-intercept first. It's the easier one. Plug in zero. So it looks like we just get 0, 0 for that y-intercept. We don't do behavior at this one. We do behavior at the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are when the function equals 0. And we'll also look at the behavior. So x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 12x squared equals 0. We get some good factoring practice. So I'm probably going to factor out an x squared, since they all have an x squared in common. And then we get x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Keep factoring. I need a product of 12 and a sum of 7. So that would be 3 and 4. So x squared x plus 3 x plus 4 equals 0. So I have three zeros. So x equals 0 is a 0. And since it has multiplicity 2, it just touches, right, and turns. It does not cross. So that was the rule for even powers. So it's just going to touch. We can leave that as a sketch. x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 4. Those have multiplicity 1, which means they cross. So 1, 2, 3. It's going to cross 3. It's going to cross 4. Negative 4, sorry. So how the heck is this going to work? So we know we're going to start up here. And we're just going to kind of guess. So if we start up here and we have to cross negative 4, we're going to go down and cross it. And then at some point I have to turn around. Again, we don't know where we're turning around, but we turn around. It's smooth. So these are smooth. Don't make corners. Polynomials are nice and smooth. So it shouldn't look like this. No sharp corners. So then we're going to cross negative 3 as we come back up. And then we have to hit 0. So the only way to hit 0, again, is to turn. Again, I don't know where. That's OK. And then we're going to touch 0 because of the multiplicity 2. And then we're going to go back up. And that agrees with the end behavior. And that's our graph. You'll see there's no symmetry. The main things, again, we're doing is end behavior is correct and behavior at the zeros. And then the remainder of the graph is a little bit of a guess. Cool. So let's try a couple more. So these are sketches. They're not going to match perfectly with each other. But again, the parts that I highlighted in orange should all agree. So let's try two more, and maybe we'll feel good about this. So this one's already factored for you. We have x plus 1 squared and x minus 1 cubed. So I'm actually, yeah, let's just start with n behavior. n behavior, we need the leading term. Um, I don't want to multiply this out. Uh, if you want to, you can. But if you multiply this out, 
you have x plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, right? It's going to be really annoying to multiply out. But I can figure out the leading term without multiplying it out. So we're basically going to look at the highest power. It looks like it goes up to x to the fifth, right? x squared and x cubed. So x to the fifth would be my highest power. You're totally welcome to multiply this out, but you're going to waste so much time, right? You're going to have to do FOIL or like three or four times, right? And then multiply those out. It's just going to take forever because you're going to multiply, multiply, and then keep going, right? It's just going to take forever. It's really not worth our effort. So it's going to behave like a positive x to the fifth, which means a positive and an odd power means we start at the bottom and then we go up. For me, symmetry, I usually skip when it's factored already um, because symmetry only tells us so much. It's not absolutely necessary, so I usually skip when it's factored already. Uh, we don't know all the terms and multiplying it out, again, is an option, but the amount of information we get from that is not worth the work. Right, so it's a little information for a lot of work. Right, we'd have to multiply this out to figure that out, and to me, it's just not worth it, the effort. Um, it doesn't, I think the zeros will give us enough information. Um, but what's nice about this one is the intercepts are really easy to find. Because it's already factored. So the x-intercepts are going to tell us enough that we really don't care about symmetry. So it's really part of being a good math student and a good calculus student is really evaluating risk and reward, right? The risk um, for finding symmetry is not worth the reward. It's so much work for very little information. And behavior and intercepts, I think, will tell us enough. So let's see. We have x equals negative 1 with a multiplicity of 2, meaning it touches. So touches or touches, right? It could touch on top or bottom. I'm leaning towards the bottom since it looks like the graph is already down here. But we'll see what happens. And then x equals 1 is multiplicity 3, which means it crosses and is flat. So, right, it'll cross it, but it'll be flat for a little. And then the last one is the y-intercept. We just plug in 0. Which we get 1 times negative 1, so we get negative 1. So 0, negative 1, which would be this direction. So that helps me find some the turning point a little bit. So we know we have to start at the bottom because of the arrow. And we know we're going to go to negative 1, and we're only going to touch so we're not going to cross, we're going to touch, and then we're guessing that we'll probably turn around right there. We may turn around sooner, we don't know. Oops, sorry. And then we're going to go up, and then what happens at 1? We're going to cross, but we're going to be flat for a little from the third power. And then we just go up. And that's our graph. Um, main idea, again, and behavior matches and behavior at the x-intercepts. Other than that, we might be a little bit different from each other. It's just a sketch. All right, let's do one final graph, and then you can get lots of practice in the book. And you can always use Desmos to check your work. Um, so let's see. Let's, we have another factored one. Um, I'm not going to multiply this out. Again, it's going it's not worth the effort. But we have negative x squared. We have x minus 1 cubed. And then we have 3x minus 1. So my end behavior is kind of the leading term. If I were to multiply this out, what would be the biggest term? So it would kind of be the biggest, the first, the biggest powers. So it would be negative x squared, right, would be my first term, times x cubed times 3x. 
If I were to multiply this out, this would be my leading term. Some of you might see it better if I multiply out the x minus 1s three times, right? But the first term would be multiplying kind of all the first terms. So this leads me to negative 3x to the 6th. So we have a negative coefficient and an even power. So it's going to be down and down. So the leading term is, if I were to multiply this out, what would be my first term? I'm going to skip symmetry again. I really only do symmetry if it's easy. It gives us useful information, but not super important information. Um, so since I don't know all the individual terms, I'm not going to waste my effort. I'm just going to skip symmetry. And then let's do intercepts. We already have it factored, so that helps us a lot. I'm just copying it down. So we have 0 with multiplicity of 2, meaning it touches at 0, 0. So it's going to touch or touch, right, We depending on where our graph is. We have x equals 1, multiplicity of 3. Multiplicity of 3 means it's flat but crosses. So at 1, it'll be flat, but it crosses. And then our last one is a little trickier, so we'll solve this one. 3x minus 1 equals 0. So add 1, divide by 3, so we get 1 third with multiplicity of one, so it just crosses. So one third would be BB right there. And then we actually already found the y-intercept because we had zero, zero. So we don't need to plug in zero. We already found that one. There's only one y-intercept. So let's sketch this. So we're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna go up to zero, zero, and it's only gonna touch. So that means it's going to touch. It's going to turn because it has to go through one third and it's going to cross at one third. So I, again, do not know where it turns. That's just an estimate right now. And then we have to turn around again to go through one. So we're going to turn around again. We're going to flatten out for a second and then go through. And that's my sketch. So end behavior. and zero behavior, right? And otherwise in between, we don't know how high it goes or when it turns around, but we can at least estimate. So graphing is weird right now because again, it's not a perfect graph, it's a sketch. The blue highlighted part should match, but what's going on in between might vary a little with steepness and when it turns around and all that. Uh, but that's graphing. So these are the three things I look at. It's a new method of graphing. We're no longer plotting points or making those tables, right? We're just specifically looking at end behavior and the intercept behavior. So let me know if you have any questions.